hello my gorgeous friends on the internet how you all doing okay welcome to this part of the tutorial and the last section we actually built our login page and the register page and you saw how i was able to utilize the custom uh, fields that i created to make everything easy and simple and you can see the login page is just so short so assuming just imagine if we didn't create this uh these are uh, custom widgets just imagine if we didn't create this custom widget you know this line would be so long you know and stuff like that but having this stuff was so easy and now we have our register page and the login page and you can see the smooth animation okay like uh, the cupertino page router for ios so if you want to change it back to uh to maybe to have that android feed you can go to your router and then change this stuff from cupertino to pay material page router okay Alright, so I said that we are, we are supposed to change this color because the primary color of the application is purple instead of blue. So to change that, what we are going to be doing is to go over to our main.dat page and inside this uh, material app, we actually have a place for app bar team. I think, yeah, app bar team. No, not app bar team. Actually, we have team. So we can have a team data so we want to set the team the default team for application so inside here you can actually add your font family if you want but well, we are not using any font family for this so i'll, I'll set the app bar team and i'll change it okay so we'll be using app bar team and i'll give it a color so remember our primary color which has already been defined for us so i'll be using that the primary color is actually inside if you go to your styles and you're going to see colors and we have this primary color which is actually purple okay so everything is just simplified we don't really have to write so many code to get things done so if you want to change the primary color of your app you just have to go to this page and then change this color to something else and it's going to change everywhere that you call that particular method okay let's save this you can see this will change to purple okay yeah so we have our app bar looking good and looking clean matching colors and everywhere awesome awesome right uh, remember we're also going to use uh we're also going to be using checkbox for this and we're also going to be using floating action button but i won't be changing their colors for now but we're going to change that later so let's just change the app um, primary color as well okay so let's change okay from here okay we can have primary color like so okay all right so now we are good to go now what i'm going to we have, what you are going to be creating today is the logic okay for this application like the login login or logic okay for this app that is the auth provider what we are going to be doing first is to uh, create the register so go to your provider and create a new folder you're going to call this one auth provider okay so everything about authentication is going to be inside here okay then inside the auth provider we're going to create a new file called auth provider okay so inside this auth provider i'm going to uh, write the function or uh, the logic for sorry the met the function to make the uh post request to create a new user and also to get a new user so we'll be using provider here because we're going to extend chain notifier to actually listen to the response and then we can perform any other action we want to perform so i'll be doing this from scratch okay instead of copying and pasting for us to understand how this is done so because i'm using uh authentication okay because i'm using a uh, state management i will have to extend chain notifier that will give us access to notify listener that will help uh, notify any other listener that's actually listening to the changes from this particular class okay so it imports um foundation by default so first thing i want to do is to first let me initialize the base url so i'll call this one uh, a final string is a string you know so i'll call this url so i'll call app app strings right it's from app string right okay so i don't know what we use there let's go to our constant to see <coughs> okay app url and um, base url okay okay so i will go over to my auth screen and i'll change this one to app url and dot base url okay so i'll i think i'll just have to change this to is to request I'll just have to change it to request base URL. Okay. 
so you just uh, explain just let it be simple then here I'm going to create a getter I'm going to create a setter so whenever the value changes so we are going to use this to actually check uh, know when our data changes so if you want to learn more about a provider I actually have a video uh, is talking about provider so you might want to look that up because I won't be going into details on provider but I'll just show you how to use it in a real life project so we have a bool uh, which is, is loading and that's more like the status like when we are making a request to the API so that is going to be changed and then we have uh, the default response message for now I'm just going to set it to an empty string then right here okay this is not supposed to be a boolean it's supposed to be a string my bad and then I'm, I'm going to create a getter so this is more like what we are going to be listening to in our flutter application when it changes we'll call notify listener within this class and it will change it and then any other class that is listening to this particular getter we're going to update yeah for us so i'll use a get it's loading if you notice something i didn't really use i didn't make the <coughs> the variable name private but this other setter actually made it private because it's only going to be assessed within this class so this one will be assessed anywhere outside this class so it's going to be it's loading and this one is going to be a string of getter response message like so and then we can now uh, set it to response message like so then what i'm going to do here and i'm going to have a uh, a, a null a null function which is called register users so what this class does is it just helps us to register a new user okay and it's going to be a sync function all right so this register user now remember we are actually getting we actually pass going to from the api we actually we actually need to pass the uh email provider uh, yeah <coughs> we're going to pass the email the password the first name and also the last name and then i actually need i actually like passing contest here as well so we're going to pass this stuff so this is more like a private mm, a name constructor all right so we have the email that will be requested from the user whenever we try to create a new user email password first name and last name so inside this is sync function now we're going to have by default i want to set it is loading whenever we call this function i want to set it loading to true and then once we do that i will call notify listener so once it's through you will see this our widgets this our button is going to change to gray because the status now will not change to true and it will change to gray i hope you're getting the concept all right so now we are going to create the get the base url so this is going to be a, a url and then we can now initialize the request base url like so okay if you ask me where is this base url coming from it's actually coming from here okay then initialize this request base url which is this okay so what we are going to do here now we're going to add the path okay slash then find the path where is the path so you go to the api now and you can see the path is actually users okay so this is the users path so we're going to copy that and then paste it here like so okay okay and then we're going to create the payload which is the body that the api needs and if you look here now if you look at this look at the payload it needs a first name a body and the email address okay so i already have that so what i'm just going to do just to uh, copy and paste it here all right so now we have the body first name make sure it matches uh that of the one you're actually making that is good to read the documentation before you do anything can see the first name the same with this last name email and password so where is, where, are, where is this first name coming from it's actually coming from here first name last name email and password so whenever we click on this register function we are going to get this value that the user passed and then add it send it to this method okay this function all right then for it to validate you can decide to print it out for debugging reason yeah to print out the body yeah that would be really helpful for you okay then the next thing we are going to do now is to import uh http package because it's very important so we're going to import http package uh, dot that okay so you want to make sure you have that and we are going to add an alias so as http then right here now remember you already you have already added http in your postpeg.tml file okay so to avoid conflict all right then once you do that we are going to go over to this page 
and i'll be using i'll be wrapping this inside try and catch because we don't trust anything network request because it can have errors at any time okay so we'll be having a socket exception in case there's any error concerning uh, internet issues and also okay this one is on socket exception so whenever there's anything error if there's any network issue we can return internet connection is not available then if any error that we don't understand we can just try again you know catch it inside here so inside this try and catch we're going to run the main method that we're going to be using for this particular project so for here now what i'm going to do i'm going to use the http response to make the request uh don't forget to add a sync here because we are actually working with a synchronous function okay so inside here i will have http dot response okay like this which is the type and i'll call this response for short and no it's a request i'll use q there okay request then i'll await it and i'll call http dot remember it's a post method if you look at the type here now it's actually a post type okay so you want to use post http dot post okay then it needs a uri you can see so you can use uri dot pass then we can now put in the URL which we want to send it to, which is that part, like so. And then we can have a, a body, so always JSON decode. Sometimes you need to ask the backend developer if you need to decode the JSON or not. Sometimes you don't really need encode, sorry. So we actually encoding it means you're sending it to string, but sometimes the backend developer handles it from uh, the back end, so you don't really need to pass that. But in our case, uh, we need to pass it there, okay? You can see now I'm not really passing headers to this because when you're creating a new user or registering a new user, you don't really need to pass any header, okay? Then right here now, what I'm going to do now is to say if uh, the response, the status code is equal to 200 or let's say if the response request, sorry, the status code is equal to 201 that means it's successful so what we have to do there is just for now uh, let me just print out the uh, request dot body okay for us to just see what was printed out okay so i'm not going to do any hard stuff here so let's just print that one out okay so i think this video is getting longer a little bit uh, i think i just have to uh, conclude the register part and then the next section we are going to work on the login as well so for now i'm just going to okay if a request or status code is equal to 200 that means request is successful then else if it's not then what we can just do is just to uh, print out the response okay and then we notify listener and set the status to false like so so this is going to be a request uh, it's always advised you decode it to an object so that you'll be able to work with it okay this is supposed to be response okay and we can so i'm decoding it now because initially when we are sending it we encode it to a string then if you are getting the response you have to decode it to an object which you can pass and use the way you want okay then we set the is loading equal to force and notify the listener all right then for this part we are going to do something else here okay but for now let's just uh return account created okay and uh, yeah let's just return account created and then print out the response to see what was printed out okay but i still need to decode it first okay before we do anything all right so we can call resource here all right so i believe uh this is not really hard so in the next section i'm going to explain this and also integrate uh, uh put the provider the logic uh, the provider the method for logging in a new user